my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on an introduction to alkenes. So in this video it's just going to be a very quick uh, short introduction to looking at uh, the molecules of the alkene and how we name them as well. We're going to look at some sigma and pi bonds, uh, reactivity and some of the uses of these things as well. So the alkene has the general formula of CnH2n, uh, that means it has a double bond and um, these molecules uh, or we normally class them as unsaturated molecules because they contain double bonds. Uh, nomenclature is relatively straightforward and um, they're very similar to an alkane, except instead of the ane bit we put ene. I'm going to show you three uh, different types of alkenes that we've got here. We've got the bog standard alkene here. This one's got two carbons, so we're just going to call this ethene. So we're going to do this one in red. So this is called ethene. And you see we've got this one here. Again, uh, we're looking for the uh, double bonds and which carbons they sit on and as the general rule, well as the rule uh, for uh, nomenclature we must number from the lowest carbon. So you can see here we can number from here which is one, two, three, four, five. We've got a double bond between carbon one and two but we pick the lowest one which is one and we've got a double bond between carbon three and four but we pick the lowest one which is three. So uh, in terms of this, this one's actually going to be called uh, pent because we've got five, so it's penta, uh, and then we name literally where the alkenes are going to be, so it's going to be one comma three dash, uh, and this is going to be a diene because we've got two alkenes, so you've got to remember to put that little bit in there as well, so it's diene, and remember to put commas between numbers and dashes to separate or hyphens to separate uh, letters and numbers. So uh, this one's called penta one three diene, and make sure you put the little a in as well just at the end there okay uh, and this one is a cyclo compound so this is uh, again it's five carbons i've just taken the same one uh, and this one is called uh, cyclopentene we don't need to give the number for this one because we only have one ene in here but if we had more than one again just like the previous one we have to add the numbers and say where this double bond is but you must number from the lowest carbon, not from the second one. So um, in this case, it's penta 1, 3, diene. Okay, so uh, alkenes have this, uh, have these two bonds, they have this double bond in the middle. And some exam boards uh, want you to know uh, the significance of the sigma and pi bonds. So it's worth checking the specification to see if this fits. Uh, some examples, you don't need to worry about this. So make sure you're checking your specification. Now, a sigma bond is basically where you get two s orbitals that overlap. And this is a covalent bond. Um, so when these two overlap, we get this kind of like, looks like a bone. Uh, and the two s orbitals effectively merge together. We get a really good overlap. And there's a good attraction between the positive nucleus and the outermost electron. And because of this strong attraction between the positive nucleus and the electron cloud, the outermost electrons, we actually have a really strong sigma bond. But um, alkenes actually have another bond as well, and they have something called a pi bond. A pi bond is where we get two p orbitals, which are in the figure of eight. They come together and they overlap, but they overlap to form this weird kind of like hot dog bun shaped um, configuration here. And the reason why that happens is actually the, we've got this figure of eight, it nips in at the middle. So effectively we have no electrons in the middle, um, or no chance of the electrons being in the middle at any point. So that means you have this big empty space here, but the electrons can sit top and bottom. So effectively because the electrons are now spread over two lobes, a top and a bottom one, the pi bond isn't seen as strong as the sigma bond, um, and because of the sharing of electrons. But it's very, very important to know that an alkene has both a sigma bond and a pi bond. It actually has both. But when we undergo reactions with alkenes, which we'll look at in a minute, we are breaking the weaker pi bond. Um, it's a bit of a myth to say that um, the uh, breaking of partially of a double bond is actually really strong, when it isn't because you're only breaking the pi bond. Remember when you're breaking a double bond, you're only breaking one of the, uh, one of the bonds, not the actual sigma bond, which is significantly stronger. So as a result of this, Alkenes are actually quite reactive in comparison to their normal single bond alkane uh, counterparts, so which are a lot more stable because of this inability or real difficulty to break this sigma bond. So just moving on to the reactivity, like I say, the pi bond is weaker than the sigma bond, and alkenes are more reactive than alkanes as a result, like I say. 
They are attacked by things called electrophiles. Now, electrophiles are species uh, which the literal translation is electron-loving species, but these are species that have uh, an electron-deficient zone in them. So normally they have an electronegative element in them, uh, so they kind of a delta-positive aspect. It could be induced. Uh, you could have an induced polarity uh, with bromine, but there'll be videos looking into that uh, within this series, within this playlist on alkenes, uh, looking into the mechanisms of the addition reactions of halogens to alkenes. So uh, look at them ones if you're interested in them. Uh, and uh, sulfuric acid as well is another example. Again, we've got that polarity there. You could also have molecules which actually have a full positive charge as well. So it doesn't just have to be delta positive. So as long as it's a, a species with an electron deficient zone. Uh, now, alkenes have an electron rich area. And so we're going to add that on there. So this bit here is very electron rich. So we say electron density uh, is high. And due to this high electron density, this makes it really attractive uh, by electrophiles. And it is important that you need to be able to comment on this um, high area of electron density in the alkene because it's that that's going to be, uh, that's going to open up and effectively react with this lot here. Alkanes don't actually have this because they just have a single bond. Okay, just look at the final thing. Um, these things, alkenes, come from uh, cracking. So we take a, an alkane, a long chain alkane, uh, and we break that molecule up into smaller bits uh, and we can get alkanes and alkenes as well. Uh, these alkenes are actually really useful for making polymers, which you will need to know later on. Uh, again, there'll be videos looking into that, into the alkenes topic as well, uh, into the playlist into alkenes. So we, you can have a look at them videos to look at how we can actually form the polymers. Um, but the most important thing is plastics. Um, they have revolutionized the way we live today just about everything you see, touch and wear is made of plastic. So thanks to these uh, alkenes, we can actually have the modern life that we have today. So um, there we go. There's a very quick introduction to alkenes. Bye bye.